So Lowe's is one of my favorite art supply stores. Yep, you heard right, Lowe's. I love to wander the aisles and just see what I can make with all of the different bits and pieces and tools and fun stuff that they have there. The paint aisle is pretty obvious with the brushes and the paints and drop cloths are good for um, collage as well. And um, I also love to pick out the window screen and use that for collages. Um, the other day I found some wood strips and I used those to make a magnetic frame. And I also found this roll of three feet by 140 feet of brown paper for only $12 at Lowe's. So I decided to use it to make some collages. And I really got into it and I actually started weaving the brown paper. It's been lots of fun. So this video is all about how I use the brown paper to make the collage. So here I'm starting by drawing some designs onto brown paper and then tearing and cutting the brown paper into pieces and arranging them into a composition of some sort. As you can see, it takes me a while to figure it out and I try out about a zillion things until I come up with something that I like. And once I do, then I can paste it down onto the paper using matte medium. This is golden matte medium. I'm using this rather than Mod Podge because it gives me a little more drying time and gives me the opportunity to change my mind, although I don't usually once I've decided that I've come up with the composition. And now I am using the brown paper as a background uh, for laying out these pieces of basically watercolor that I cut up quite a while ago and haven't quite figured out what to do with until today. I like the way that the Mod Podge adds a leather-like effect to the brown paper when it dries. It looks a little funny when it's wet, but it, I like the look of it when it dries. And here I am pulling out some old pieces of collage material and trying to figure out what to do with them. I thought maybe I'd use some of these pieces of drop cloth, but in the end I decided against those. I'll use them for another day. I'm beginning to like this composition right here, and I'm adding a few things that I really like, and then I decide to get rid of them. But well, that's life. I'm making a lot of collages. If I make something that I like and get rid of it, someday again I will make something else that I like. So. I just keep going until I find something that satisfies me in the moment. And I am going to use some window screen right here. I like using window screen because it allows the background to show through and sort of provides a shadow-like effect. Those are chickens. It's mid-afternoon and my chickens and roosters do not have a clue what time it is. They think they can play all day. So now I am using some Holbein Opera in yellow and some Holbein Purple in yellow and now I am tearing up the opera in yellow to make orange pieces of brown paper and setting those aside not sure what I'm going to do with them you can see the stuff up ahead I'm not sure what to do with that either here I am taking some extremely cheap cream coat yellow paint and mixing it with some Oh yeah, just by itself. I just love the way when this stuff spreads over the brown paper that it creates such cool texture. There's something about the texture of the brown paper that shows through when you use this plastic to scrape across the paper. I'm not using anything fancy here. This is actually just a little um, vegetable seedling label. I had a whole bunch of extras, so I saved them to use as paintbrushes. So I'll let that dry. 
And then I'm going to do the same thing with Holbein Luminous Opera. I just love this pink color. It's very bright and bold, so I can't use it all by itself all the time, but it's just fun. I just love that color. And it looks so cool. And I like the way you can see the lights and the darks. When I swish it all over the paper with complete random abandonment. Just making sure I'm using up all my paint here. And now I'll let these dry for it doesn't take very long. It's acrylic on brown paper, so no time at all and they're dry. So now it's time to tear them into strips. I've decided I'm going to weave these strips together. Not sure how it's going to turn out, but that's the fun of playing. And if it doesn't turn out, it really doesn't matter. I've got a whole roll of this stuff and I can play for quite some time very economically. <laughs> There's something satisfying about tearing paper. I love the way that the edges aren't quite perfect and yet they're straight. The little fuzzy edges are kind of fun. Now I'm going to arrange these things on the yellow paper, weaving them. Weaving is fun. And I'm trying to do this in a cross at an angle to add some dynamism to the uh, composition. If I just had it straight up and down or left and right or whatever, it wouldn't be quite as dynamic or interesting. And now I'm using some of these little pieces of yellow and purple to add a little patch to this thing to add some more interest. And I'm trying to place it in one of those tic-tac-toe spots. If you place something in a tic-tac-toe uh, intersection, on a composition for some reason or another that's pleasing to the human eye. So that's what I'm trying out here. Maybe I should have kept those. They look kind of nice there, but I do take them off. You never know what you're going to end up with. Now this orange piece that I eventually end up adding is just a combination of the yellow and the pink. It makes such a cool orange with that pink. That I love that luminous opera color. It just makes the coolest orange when you mix it with yellow. So now I'm trying to figure out what my composition is going to be. I have tried a million compositions with this thing, um, framed it a dozen different ways, and I still haven't come up with the final composition, but that's okay. I can wait. Now, gluing this down was a bit of a challenge to make sure I didn't lose the way the weave was, but it worked. Just a little bit at a time here. Maybe things weren't always in the exact spot where they were intended, but I think that doesn't matter in this particular case.
And the golden matte medium works really well for this rather than the Mod Podge because it doesn't dry as quickly. It leaves me some time for, for working. And you'll notice this gets all lumpy and wrinkly, but we got a solution for that. I'll show you later on. Now, I wanted to add some interest to the background and even the foreground of this thing. So I'm using some watercolors and these tubes that appear to be cut open, that's because they're ancient and they're mostly dry. So I just peeled them open. Those are actually tubes of watercolor that my mother used to use and she passed away in 1997. So they've been around for a while but they're still quite useful because watercolor is always useful. Now I get to figure out what to do as far as the composition is concerned. I mean, that's okay. It's not a problem, so I will just chop it up. Ooh, there must be something. I bet there's a cat. It's okay. Theodore. That's Theodore, my assistant and uh, guard dog. He guards against cats, not burglars. Now I'm trying to figure out how to frame this. And I actually, in the end, I decided that I was going to frame it with uh, more of a uh, what you call a brown paper border around it. But at this point, I'm trimming it off quite close. Always give myself the option to change my mind. Now, what to do with this? Should I have it more over to the side? I want to have it at an angle, sort of at a cross an X shape, because I want to give it some movement. And when you put things at an angle, it provides movement. But there's so many different angles that I could use and so many different compositions. And should I put newsprint as the background? I decided against that, actually. I wanted something a little lighter and with more contrast. So here I am using a piece of white paper and trying to decide what the, on earth I want to do with this. I don't end up with a final decision, but nonetheless, I am going to glue it down to this white mixed media paper. Now here I am trying some not rectangular compositions. I mean, maybe that's what I'll settle on in the end. Who says everything has to be a rectangle? I can do it all sorts of different ways. Sometimes though, when I overwork it and I think too hard, I come up with nothing, which is basically what happened here. I will end up gluing this down and one of these days I will get back to it and look at it and all of a sudden I'll see which way I want to display it. And at that point, I'll get it set. Now, I'm almost out of matte medium, so I'm being very sparing as I apply it. And the whole thing looks rather lumpy and as though it is not going to fully adhere to the paper. However, I got a solution. This is parchment paper from my kitchen. And these are some priority mail um, envelopes, as you can see, which are tie back. And on top of that, I put a piece of plexiglass. On top of that, I put a towel. And then my favorite flattening tools are these very inexpensive bricks that came from Lowe's. 
And you will notice that once they've dried for a couple hours with those very heavy but inexpensive bricks on them, that my uh, collage was actually nice and flat. So uh, there, now that's a better composition. Okay, on this one, I'm, yeah, thinking that maybe I like something that isn't rectangular. I make my decision, mark some corners, and cut. Now since that time, I've changed my mind again <laughs> and decided to sort of semi place that back in what it came out of. I haven't made my final decision on this one either. So these are the four collages I came up with. Some I like more than others. I really like that pink and yellow woven one in the middle. I like the one on the upper right with the watercolor against the background. I'm not 100% sold on the other two. Maybe they could use some more work and if I tweak them a little bit, I'll be able to come up with something that I really enjoy. Um, I don't know. I will put them aside for a while and make up my mind in the end. And I'll get that pink and yellow one framed for sure within the next week or two. And then I'll show you guys on my Instagram what it looks like. So I hope you enjoyed this video. And please leave any comments or questions that you have in the comment section below. I love to know what you're thinking so that I can tailor the content to your needs. If you'd like to watch another video showing you easy ways to make abstract art, this time using spray paint and stencils, check out the first comment down below. Then check out that video's description to download your own version of the print for free. You can have it printed large and frame it, print it on your own printer and frame it, use it as wallpaper on your laptop or phone, or paste it on a blank card and send it to a friend. The sky's the limit. Thanks very much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.